Hello, this is the second video in a little series that I'm calling uh, Transformations or Transformations of Random Variables. And this video we're going to look at the CDF technique or the Cumulative Distribution Technique. Um, this picture describes every scenario that we're going to cover in this, in this series. That we have a random variable X and its domain, call it S, and um, we have a function that maps sets to sets over here, so A goes to B. Um, and uh, we're going to call this generically Y, the, so Y equals H of X. And then we have also an inverse image of B, which is A. So everything that is mapped to B is called the inverse image of B. Um, so one note, like the CDF technique is the cumulative distribution function. So if we can, if we set B to be, you know, the set such that Y is less than some number, less than or equal to some number, so that's like the accumulative you know distribution type thing so then we can find um, you know the distribution of y in terms of x where x is the inverse image of b okay so that we'll we'll cover that in more uh, detailed terms in a second but ultimately we're going to we're going to fix set b such that when we find the distribution it's really the cdf and then the CDF uniquely determines the, the probability or the distribution function. So let's, let's, what did I just say? The distribution of X, of a random variable X, is uniquely determined by its distribution function, cap F of X. Thus, to find the distribution of Y, P of Y, of the random variable Y, it suffices to determine its distribution function. So that means we set B to be this uh, everything less than or equal to some value, call it little y. And so that's what this is doing. And so then we're going to find the probability of B, which is the distribution function of y. And then once we know that, we can find the, the, uh, the, the you know, the distribution of the, the density or the probability mass function of y. Okay, so let's let H be a one-to-one -one transformation. Then for each Y and T, there exists one X and S such that H of X equals Y. And also the inverse uh, image. And, and in this case, the, since it's a one-to-one -one transformation, we can call it the inverse function exists. And the inverse image of H of X is X. So assuming H is increasing, then the distribution function of Y, which is probably that Y is less than or equal to some number, little y, and then Y is this H of X, and then we take the inverse uh, function or inverse image of both, and we get this, but this right here is X, so the probability that X is less than or equal to some number X, and this X is determined by the inverse function of y that's that x and well that's the cdf of x and then so once and this is known so then we can find the cdf of y uh, now one one tricky note though that if our function h is decreasing then the formula is a little bit different and i'll show you so the the cumulative distribution function of y is probably y is less than or equal to some number which h of x and then um here, when we take the inverse image of both of these, note that this inequality changes. It goes from less than or equal to to greater than or equal to. Then this is X, and that is, you know, the inverse image of Y, which were, you know, it maps to little x. And then the probability that we're greater than or equal to X is 1 minus the probability that we're X is less than little x. And then... Uh, this is 1 minus the CDF approaching and this little dash at the end means we're approaching it from the left. So if there's a gap in the CDF function, 
then we have to you know be careful with this now if f is continuous then that kind of goes away because it equals that um, and here here's a little justification of why the inequality changes so let's let's let x or h be decreasing then here's our value let's call it y zero so that would be this value and we want to be less than it which is what this says and so when we take a transformation of that which is the inverse of 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 y naught which we get some x value but then the values associated with here are associated with values greater than this x naught and so that's what that's what happened here um, here you know since we're interested in y values less than naught and h is decreasing then you know when we do the transformation it's actually values greater than here you know are mapped to values less than or equal to there anyway so that's why the the transformation uh, or the inequality switches okay but it should be noted that sometimes it's possible to find the the distribution function of y cap f of y of our random variable y in terms of the distribution function of x even though h is not one to one and here's an example so if y equals x squared which you know is the classical parabola and it passes the vertical line test so it is a function but it doesn't pass the horizontal line test so it's not a one-to-one -one function then for y greater than zero which you know it has to be greater than or equal to zero the cdf of y is probably y is less than or equal to some number take the inverse image of or the replace y cap y with the the function of x well this is x squared but this is equivalent to x being between the minus square root of y and square root of y and then um, we can think of this in terms as the cdf so x being less than or equal to this value and then subtract off what's below it and notice there's no equal to sign here because we don't want to subtract that little piece off because we want it in this probability but then this is the cdf of x you know at square root of y and and to be strictly less than not including that you have to subtract off the cdf of minus square root of i dash which means take the limit as approaches you know the left the left and in the continuous case that's kind of irrelevant but so let's uh let's look at that so in the continuous case let b be this set right here all values less than or equal to some y and let h y be uh, some transformation h of x then we find the distribution function f of y of the random variable y uh, we find uh, then we then we find the pdf f of y of the random variable y by differentiating the cdf at the continuity points of our, our f of y okay so let's give an example so let x be normal, standard normal, 0, 1. Uh, the, then the, the, func the density is this. We're going to let y equal x squared. And we want to find the density of y. And so we just showed on the previous page that we can think of the cumulative distribution function of y as this difference here in CDFs of x. Well, to now to find the the, the the density of the cumulative distribution function we take the derivative which means we take the derivative of each of these and then the derivative of this you get little f of x of square root of y but then the chain rule says we have to take the derivative of that which we get this and we do the same here and we get minus then the chain rule we get the derivative um, then we plug in this value square root of y to our uh, density the you know standard normal we do the same here we add those and we get this and then you can rewrite it to to be more like uh, chi squared so 2 raised to 1 half gamma of 1 half 
the square root of y taken up is this, so that's minus one half uh, y, and this is e to the uh, y over two, which is a chi squared one. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Now, in the next video, we're going to look at change of variable transformations, and we're going to relook at this example in a different way and show that it that it does it is a chi squared one again. Anyway, I'll talk with you then. Bye.